Anyone who still remembers the, the chapter we're discussing these evenings, the past few nights? Neighbors. Neighbors. Being good neighbor, right? Tonight, inshallah, we have another hadith, another short hadith that speaks about good neighborhood and being a good neighbor. Tolerant neighbor means a good neighbor. So you want to be a good neighbor, you need to be a tolerant neighbor. How far, to what extent? In hadith Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لا يمنع جار جاره أن يغرز خشبة في جداره ثم يقول أبو هريرة ما لي أراكم عنها معرضين والله لا أرمين بها بين أكتافكم متفق عليه In the translation the Prophet وسلم said No one should prohibit his neighbor from placing his, his rafter in his wall The rafter is basically like a, a, a wooden you know, piece that is put close in the, in the wall in order to support that and support something on top of it he said, no one should prohibit his neighbor from doing that. And then he said, Abu Hurairah now is saying, he said, now I see you turning away from this. By Allah, I shall go on proclaiming it. Actually, the statement he used in Arabic, he says, I'm going to throw this between your shoulders. That's what it, the literal translation, Ar-Mian Nabiha Bain Aktafikum. And the word, the word throwing it between your shoulders could mean one of two things. Whether what was mentioned in the translation, like I'm going to keep repeating this over and over again until you heed, until you listen to me, or it could be something physical, which means I'm going to beat you up if you don't listen to me. But why would Abu Hurairah have this authority, or even have this, you know, kind of like, I would say, this attitude, you could say, to proclaim that if you don't listen to me, I'm going to beat you up until you listen to me, until I straighten you up. Anyone could figure it out? Where did he get that power, that authority from? At that time, Abu Hurairah was the governor for Medina. He was the governor for Medina, radiallahu ta'ala wa arda. So when he was a governor, he had the authority. He says, listen, if you guys don't straighten up in your ways, I'm going to make it happen. That's what he's saying. Basically, like I'm going to punish those who prevent this from happening. And his biggest concern, obviously, is not really the stick itself or the wooden part that is being put on the wall. No. His biggest concern is people not listening to the Prophet ﷺ and people disregarding the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That's his biggest thing. Like if you don't listen to me, you're disobeying, disobeying the Prophet ﷺ. Now let's go back and study the hadith. The hadith is very simple. The Messenger of Allah says, لا يمنع جار جارة أن يغرز خشبة في جدار. A neighbor should not prevent his neighbor from placing khashaba, a rafter or that piece of wood to be placed on the wall. Here's the thing first. In the past, people used to build these houses from adobes and bricks, right? They used to share the same wall. It's not like today, we have separate door, uh, houses and you have space between these houses. It's not the same anymore. But back then, they used to share the same wall. So if someone wants to dig, let's say, put that, that piece of wood on the wall, maybe to create a, a, another space for a roof, for example, or to cover an area for the, from the sun and so forth, People, they might be annoyed by that. So he's saying here, don't. Because it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't affect the, the sturdiness of the wall. And it's not on your side probably. So therefore, it's okay. It's a shared wall between you. That's fine. It should be fine. Now that could apply to, in our time, could apply to the shared fence that we have, you know, between these houses. If you have a fence that you share with neighbors behind you or between you know, the houses, that, that fence is basically is a mutual responsibility. So let's say, let's say, I would like to, your neighbor wanted to tie a rope on one, this, one of the side of the fence to the other side. They want to have a streak for their laundry, for example. You know, they want to do that. They just want, they say that it's healthier to have, you know, the sun, the, the clothes ex- exposed. Does it hurt you? Is it going to pull that fence down on the ground? No, it doesn't. So you shouldn't be bothered by that. Yeah, but you know... Their clothes, you're, you don't have to look at it. Maybe it's just completely invisible to you. As long as it doesn't affect you, doesn't hurt you, you should be fine with that. You should be fine with this. Similarly, if you have, let's say, a shared uh, uh, bushes or shrubs that separates between the front yard, for example, of the houses. Same thing too. If they decided to add, let's say, a flower or a tree here or there that doesn't hurt you, doesn't cover you, doesn't close any sight from your windows and so on, you shouldn't be bothered by that. Just the fact that they're trying to improve or do something in their house that bothers you, you shouldn't act mean towards your neighbors. A tolerant neighbor is a good neighbor. So the hadith basically teaches us to be, to be actually tolerant towards one another. 
Does the governor has the right to enforce the law or the rules even if people would resist? The answer is yes. Like in Hayat Abu Huraira over here. And Umar bin Khattab had a similar incident. When Umar radiallahu anhu was the Khalifa, there was an incident that took place between Muhammad ibn Maslama radiallahu ta'ala and the Sahabi and his neighbor. They used to have, the, they used to have a, 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 a basically a, a lands adjacent to each other. So they're close to each other. These lands were, of course, um, agricultural land. So basically, they, was, they, were, they were planting their stuff in there. Obviously, you know, the water stream moves through these lands, and people usually have turns. So what do they do? Uh, when it's your turn, you block the water until the water actually fills up and covers the land, and then you release it for the next neighbor next to you. And they take turns, basically, on that. And they have a system that they follow, so they respect that system. One of those days, the neighbor, the neighbor who, uh, uh, who's, who's, who's actually, he, he yani waters his land before Muhammad bin Maslama, didn't want the, la- the water to go through. He didn't want the water to go through. He says, no, I'm not going to let it go through. So Muhammad bin Maslama, if he doesn't go through the, his neighbor's land, it's not going to come to his land. He was kind of like, come on, I need the water to, in my land. He says, that's your business, not my business. Like, find another way. So they went to Umar bin Khattab. Umar bin Khattab studied the case, realized what the situation was. He told the other guy, he says, let the water go through. The man says, no, I'm not going to do this. So Umar the Khalifa, he said, okay, if you're not going to let go through, I swear, I'm going to make the water run over your stomach. Which means, I'm going to pin you to the ground, <laughs> I'm going to beat you up until you're on the ground, and let the water run over you, basically. That's Umar, right? <laughs> Obviously, the water yani, didn't have to go that far. But Umar as a Khalifa, as being the judge, he had also the executive authority. In addition, of course, to being the Khalifa, he could enforce that law. So uh, here in our society, we might not as individuals have the right to do so. But who has the right to enforce these rules in our neighborhoods? Who has the right to do that? Huh? Yeah, the Home Association. And homeowner association, they have the right to do that. Here in Valley Ranch, for example, if you would like to have a, a, a jumping ball in the backyard, for instance, maybe it's not allowed. You want to have a, a, a trampoline. So the neighbors next door, they would say, we don't want that. Yeah, but it's not in your, it's not in your backyard. It's in, our, it's not in our backyard. But if the law in the area says no trampoline because they might have some issues with that, then you're going to have to respect that. Again, being a tolerant neighbor also might say, you know what, doesn't hurt us. They have little kids. But if you realize this is going to be affecting maybe, you know, your life and your family life and this and that, you have the right to object to it. But again, the point from this hadith is that being a tolerant neighbor means you're being a good neighbor, inshallah, to barakah. May Allah make us all good neighbors to each other, ya Rabbil Alameen. Wallahu alam. Any question, Jama? MashaAllah, good neighborhood, alhamdulillah. As-salamu alaykum,